So the next book we'll be reading this week's Make With Jay theme, Nature, is called The Other Way to Listen by Bird Baylor and Peter Parnell. This is a book that was recommended to me during grad school. And we read this book and then we spent three weeks in nature finding an object from nature that spoke to us. So whether that was a stone, a stick, and then we spent time describing it, understanding it, transforming it. Um, it was a very interesting kind of slowing down work that was done. And so I'm going to invite you to do something similar um, at the end of this story time. And I'll also post um, some of the questions that we asked about the objects in order to kind of dive into that mindfulness of slowing down and really observing the details um, and then developing a relationship with this object. So that's the interesting outcome. And then the goal is, well, I mean, there's a lot of goals, but one of the goals is as you really spend time with one specific object from nature that you believe kind of called to you in some way and understand it a little bit more, you develop a relationship to it and so this is kind of like the micro version of how we could have a relationship with nature in a very macro way and hopefully create positive change as we begin to relate and live in harmony with things from nature instead of being on opposite sides and kind of not connected. So ultimately that goal is connectivity. The other piece to it is that the more we connect with an object from nature um, and we start thinking about how we relate to it and care for it, then that also can translate into your relationship with yourself, with other people, um, that anytime that we kind of dive into and allow ourselves to go a little deeper in that place of love and compassion and understanding and observing, we will also be able to have access to that to translate it to other relationships. So whether you're starting with an object from nature or you're starting with your relationship to yourself, your history, your personality, your emotions, or you're starting with a relationship with someone else. All of these um, are catalysts to expand us and improve our relationships in general. And that's a part of therapy, that's a part of art therapy. And specifically this week, we're talking more about environmental therapy. So that's the intro to The Other Way to Listen. There are multiple books by um, this artist and this author that you might want to look up if you really like this one after I read it to you. It's very poetic and beautiful. I used to know an old man who could walk by any cornfield and hear the corn singing. Teach me, I'd say, when we'd passed on by. I never said a word while he was listening. Just tell me how you learned to hear that corn. And he'd say, it takes a lot of practice. You can't be in a hurry. And I'd say, I have the time. He was so good at listening. Once he heard wildflower seeds burst open, beginning to grow underground. That's hard to do. He said he was just lucky to have been by himself up there in the canyon after a rain. He said it was the quietest place he had ever been, and he stayed there long enough to understand the quiet. I said, I bet you were surprised when you heard those seeds. But he said, no, I wasn't surprised at all. It seemed like the most natural thing in the world. He just smiled, remembering. Another time he heard a rock kind of murmur good things to a lizard. I was there. We saw the lizard sunning on a rock. Of course we stopped. And the old man said, I wonder how that lizard feels about the rock it's sitting on. And how the rock feels about the lizard. He always asked himself hard questions that take a while to answer.
We leaned against another rock a long time past, and then he said, Did you hear that? They like each other fine. I said, I didn't hear a thing. He said, Sometimes everything being right makes a kind of sound. Just like now. It wasn't much more than a good feeling that I heard from that old rock. Were you surprised to hear it? I always had to ask. No, he said, not a bit. It seemed like the most natural thing in the world. I said, I wish I had heard it too. And he said, he thought I might someday. He told me how a friend of his once heard a whole sky full of stars when she was seven. And later on, when she was 83, she heard a cactus blooming in the dark. At first, she didn't know what she was hearing. She found it by just following the sound. There were 20 flowers on one cactus, and they were all white as the moon. The old man said most people never hear those things at all. I said, I wonder why, he said. They just don't take the time you need for something that important. I said, I'll take the time, but first you have to teach me. I'd like to if I could, he said, but the thing is, you have to learn it from the hills and the ants and the lizards and weeds and things like that. They do the teaching around here. Just give me a clue on how to start, I said. And so he said, do this. Go get to know one thing as well as you can. It should be something small. Don't start with a mountain and don't start with the whole Pacific Ocean. Start with one seed pod or one dry weed or one horned toad or one handful of dirt or one sandy wash. I said, I'll take the sandy wash. He said, he started with one tree. Every morning of his life when he was young, he climbed a cottonwood and sat there listening. He told me it was worth the time. He said, trees are very honest and they don't care much for fancy people. And he said he doesn't know of anything he ever did as important as sitting in that tree. Tell me everything you can, I said. He said, well, you have to respect that tree or the hill or whatever it is you're with. Take a horned toad, for example. If you think you're better than a horned toad, you'll never hear its voice even if you sit there in the sun forever. And he said, and don't be ashamed to learn from bugs or sand or anything. I said, I won't. He thought of one more thing. It's good to walk with people, but sometimes go alone. That way he said, you can always stop and listen at just the right time. I'll remember everything. And I did, but nothing worked. I thought there must be something wrong with me because I only heard wind and quail and coyotes and doves, just the things that anyone could hear. I almost gave up trying. Of course, I still went walking in my hills. In fact, I used to sing to them a lot. I thought that since they wouldn't sing to me, I'd just sing to them instead. The day I'm telling you about now, I was singing, and the whole song was this. Hello, hills. Hello, hills. Hello, hills. Hello. That was after I had been away five days and I had missed those hills. Five days. I went out earlier than usual. You know how everything looks new at sunrise? Well, all those hills were looking new. I was just walking where I always walk. But that morning I kept thinking, here I am. And whatever way I happened to go was always right. I climbed the rocky side, not the path. The rocky side is steeper, but I like it best. And anyway, that's where I found my three hawk feathers. I stood at the top where I always stand looking down. Hello, hills. Hello, hills. Hello, hills. Hello. All I know is suddenly... I wasn't the only one singing. The hills were singing too. I stopped. I didn't move for maybe an hour. 
I never listened so hard in my life. Of course, their kind of singing isn't loud. It isn't any sound you can explain. It isn't made with words. You couldn't write it down. All I can say is it came straight up from those dark, shiny lava rocks, humming. It moved around like wind. It seemed to be the oldest sound in the world. All I can say is I was standing in the middle of that sound at seven o'clock in the morning, just thinking, here I am, and thinking, listen, and not even being surprised. It seemed like the most natural thing in the world. <laughs>